Well, the next 10 days, as we know, are, are pretty important to us. Not that there's going to be nearly the free time or practice time that we've had other years, but somehow, some way between finals and Christmas, we're going to try to get more opportunities to look at the things that we have not been able to look at. Uh, we have finals this week, two games against, I think, a lot better teams. Um, and maybe the last four or five have been. And we need to continue to improve on the court. We need to continue to improve our conditioning and maybe our execution. Um, trying to keep perspective on this year has been probably a little hard for you guys. It's been very hard for me. I look at things differently. Uh, I'll give you credit. I looked at the officiating things, and a lot of people were upset about it after. I didn't think as much of it. And uh, there are some adjustments we have to make there. But as a program, the, the standards that we try to set, um, you know, I, I just think that it's been a little harder for our freshmen to understand that lack of maybe upperclassmen that have that. You know, we don't have the Denzels and Costellos and Kobe's especially. Um, so... You know, we're kind of learning on the run, learning as we go. And uh, last week, we put more of an emphasis on coaching the little things. I think we made some progress. I think each week we make some progress, but it's it's the old finger in the dam that I talked about the week before. Um, we've had uh, more than our fair share of, of adversity in this period. Um, but uh, I still think that's going to help us. Uh, we're going to continue to figure out how we got to get it done. And, uh, you know, I think the players, you know, yesterday we had a good film session to try to show them, show them, show them. And I, I sometimes forget myself that when you have a lot of those four-year guys that are been players for four years, you know, they can explain it to them in the locker room on the way up when they're on the sidelines. And that is just not there right now. It's not going to be there. It's not the kind of team we have. So we have to do a better job as coaches, um, making them understand and making them see the things that we got to see. Um, Northeastern is a concern. Uh, we played them out there last year and played pretty well and won by a decent amount. But this year beating UConn, I think, gives them a little lift. They have. Uh, I'm not, not trying to put them in the same league as Kentucky or Duke, but I'm also uh, putting them in a higher level than some of the teams we've played. Uh, every game they've been in, uh, that's, that's one big thing. Six games have been by three points or less. Uh, so their five and five record is a little bit misleading. Uh, their senior is getting 22 points a game, the Williams kid. And... Uh, you know, Alex Murphy was a kid that started out at, I think, Duke, and then he went to Florida, right? And uh, so he's been around the block and been in some pretty good programs. And I think this team is very, very well coached. Uh, I think he does a great job with his team, did a great job last year. We'll be coming off finals. I, I'm not sure. I think they have finals this week, too, like most schools do. How we respond to that will be another step in the right direction for us. Questions? With um, with Miles this week, if you don't have him physically, what do you try to do if this is a big week in terms of integrating, getting everything here? You know? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, the last game we sat Miles with a, with a notepad, try to write down things that he saw that he – like that he didn't like to see if he's really watching a game to get better is he just watching it to enjoy the game and uh and as soon as he's done with finals him and i are going to go over the last three four games and then we're going to look at some of his games and see if uh you know things that he's writing down things that he's saying to me um as i said to him saturday night he texted me with a couple things and i said uh and i remember two weeks ago you know, we were questioning some of those things about you. You know, are you doing a good enough job jumping to the ball? Are you doing a good enough job in transition defense? Um, you know, all those things. So I think when you're extremely gifted athletically, 
if you can pick those things up mentally, um, you can adjust even with not playing. I mean, it's not going to be the same, but you can get something out of it. And that's what we're really looking for with Miles right now. Uh, we just don't want to waste. He's starting to condition harder now. We just don't want to waste a day because we know the process coming back is going to take some time. So anything we can do. And so it's kind of a new thing for me, too, to try to really put a guy in a position mentally to to be ready. And not many freshmen of his caliber have gotten hurt or been out or played as many minutes. So it's, it's another area of a new area, but it's also kind of exciting and kind of fun to do. Tom, uh, I think you mentioned it earlier on the call, but he's getting the boot off a little bit more and some work. And then I also yeah. about McQuaid, you said you hoped today he'd be... Yeah, McQuaid worked out a little bit yesterday because I guess that's the quote-unquote um, uh, concussion protocol. Um, come up with fancy words. It's sanitation engineer, um, concussion protocol. You know, they're kind of all in the same. Got to have a fancy word for whatever. But uh, he, uh, he went through it pretty well. Uh, today he's going to try to go through some of the practice. And then after, you'll try to do some running and shooting. But uh, I see no issue from what they tell me. Today and tomorrow will be big days, but I see no issue as far as getting him back. You know, it has not been uh, pronounced a concussion. It was concussion syndrome, symptoms, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, so I think, I think he'll be good to go. Mm. I mean, he took it off a couple times just to see how the pain is and all that. And uh, But don't overread into that. I mean, I'm just giving you the progress that I can give you. Uh, he'll have it on, I'm sure, most of this week. And then we'll see if he can start taking that thing off and, uh, and we'll gradual him back. Tom, uh, with... With the freshmen, you've hinted before about, you know, maybe rolling out an all-freshman starting lineup or, or adding them more into the starting lineup. Is that something you would look to do before league play, or you, would you be okay rolling that out in a, in a conference game? You know, I'd be okay after. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, they're getting enough experience where it's, it's not for any one reason, good or bad. Um, number one, it depends how the upperclassmen play. Uh, number two, it depends how much progress they make on the defensive end is, is maybe the biggest liability right now. Um, I got three of them that are, you know, pretty much good enough on the offensive end to, to play more minutes, do more things. But I told you this damn sport, it's not like football. It's you got to play both ends of the court, you know. And as, as we saw with Nick, you know, when um, – I mean, he didn't play any minutes in that game. Because when you, when you have two fouls so quickly and you only played a couple of minutes, um, then you don't get a chance to get in the flow of it at all. And then you start making poor decisions uh, as far as defensively. And so we have got to home up. All those guys have to get better defensively if they're going to play in a Big Ten game as a starter, which is going to probably increase their minutes some. But... They're making progress. They're making progress. And how, does that, um, how does that work as a motivational tool, um, something to kind of have in the, as a reward or, or whatever it might be to kind of maybe boost a guy up or, or bring him up? Well, yeah, you know, I mean, I said it early and I meant it early. I said it could happen, but, you know, I could be president of the United States someday too. So, I mean, things can happen. doesn't mean they're going to happen. They will be earned, you know, as best as I can – tell you and uh, I don't know if it's a reward I don't sit there and say please play better defense so you can start I say please play better defense so we can win and uh, and that's the way I look at it um, but I'm challenging them too and yet I can't over challenge them on things that there's no practice time to get better in those areas so now we got some time um, I'm really anxious to see if they take, instead of the baby steps that we've been taking, major steps forward. And the, the only way you do that is if you can self-evaluate and decide that it's not what the coach says. What do I need to do 
to be a very good player myself. And that's the part that, uh, that's the steps that I think uh, will be taken if they really deserve to be moved up. And you said this week with finals, you want to get, it, you'll probably end up having a lot more individual workouts for, for well, first of all, I guess, what, what guys do you want to see the most from with those kind of things? And secondly, when you, w with those guys you mentioned, especially the freshmen, um, in individual workouts, is it stuff that they need to work on individually or is it just within the team construct of defense more? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, they, uh, you know, like Cassius and I think Josh might be done Tuesday, you know, or Nick and them are done Friday, you know, so it never works out great. But uh, we are going to be able to practice at least three days this week like we're going at two today, three thirty tomorrow. So we, we, we have some windows in there where, uh, you know, their exams work out for us. I don't ever want to have a practice that they have exam that night, and they got tutoring sessions and all that. But a couple of these days it's worked out. But then as guys get done, then we'll start having the individual work and a lot of the individual work. It's going to be conditioning. Some of it's going to be conditioning. I just, I think we need to get in better shape and. Uh, and some of it will be on free throw shooting. Shazam. Surprise, you know. Um, and some of it will be on, you know, if there's some skill work that has to be taken care of, um, probably more on the defensive end than the offensive end. And we'll do that on a more individual or a small group, two or three guys basis. If we can work somebody in early in the morning because they don't have a final till late in the afternoon or if they're done with their finals in the morning, maybe they come over here. Some will be film sessions you know, where we're not wearing them down any. These guys have been through a hell of a semester as far as academically, you know, with all the classes they missed. Um, it's not been easy for them. So hopefully, uh, you know, I think we're regrouping pretty good in that area, but it's it's taken some work. So, you know, I got to really judge how we are mentally as much as physically. Exams take a lot out of you. Some of you guys, did you guys have to go to college to get these jobs or? Uh, Tom, one third of the way through the season, you mentioned trying to keep perspective has been a little bit difficult. But looking back over your past seasons, is there any other year you can think of where you face challenges like these, or is this new territory for you too? I'll be honest with you, you know, not not as a feel sorry for, but I've never faced the combination of the games, the travel. Even the 10 or 11 games in a short period of time, I don't even know if we've ever done that. Uh, you know, probably, but, but the travel, the injuries, and the youth, that is not a very good combination to go through. You know, if you got young guys, you'd like more practice time. If you, I talked to some guys, some coaches this week, that last week, that, you know, their schedule maybe wasn't as difficult because they knew they had a young team. You know, I really didn't know what I was going to have. You know, as I said, when the schedule was made, um, if you have Marvin, if you have Didi, it's different, you know. Um, and that really wasn't prepared for. Whether that's my fault or not, it's just the way it is. So, no, I can't, you know, this will be good for me because three years from now, if it happens again, I'll have that in the in the bank, you know. I'll have that in the back of my head. I'll, I'll know how to maybe deal with it a little bit better and project a little bit better. You know, who knows what will happen with Miles next year, so I can project a little bit better. Who knows what happened with some of the other guys. So it's been, and nobody can predict the injuries. I mean, as I told you, when I sat on that bench for the game and four guys that were sitting with me, I thought there was a good chance all four of them could have been starting this year. And it just... That's unpredictable. I don't care if I coach a million years. You know, some of those things are going to happen. They've never happened where all your bigs are gone, uh, which kind of is remarkable how well Nick has adjusted to that. Kenny's adjusted to that. Um, our freshmen have adjusted considering they don't have a lot of upperclassmen to show them the way. Um, so in a lot of ways, this has been good for me, you know makes me have to work harder. It makes me have to push my staff harder on things we have to do. And the attention to detail gets a little more cranked up because um, the minute you let something slip, there's not a 
a senior in the locker room necessarily that there's no Denzel telling guys or Draymond telling guys that, hey, you better do this. He's going to be on you about this tomorrow. Or he's talking about free throw shooting. You better get in and shoot him on your own and shoot him extra. Just things guys don't know. And uh, frustrating, yes. Understandable, definitely yes. Um, that's why there's classes. That's why there's progress. That's why there's a system of progression uh, in life. And uh, we're trying to speed that up under some different circumstances that I've been faced with before. And I'm going to learn from it. They're going to learn from it. And right now, we, we're keeping our head above water. And that's, uh, I think that means we're moving in the right direction. When the schedule came out, uh, it looked like an awesome Big Ten start with Minnesota, Northwestern, Rutgers. Relative, Minnesota looks a lot better than I've seen them in a while. Northwestern looks like they may be a tournament bubble team. Not that you Rutgers prepare is what eight and one. Not that you prepare differently, but how does that add to the equation that the, the Big Ten start is no longer as friendly as it once looked? Well, it kind of goes with the rest of the year. You know, um, there's been a lot of different things this year that, that uh, you know, you look at, and especially, you know, trying to figure out where Miles will be. Um, number one, whether he's back or not, but more importantly, if he's back, how long is that adjustment going to take? So, uh, and then you kind of look at who's got bigger teams, who's got smaller teams, you know, things like that. So it's... Uh, I can't say that I've even had 10 seconds to look uh, too far in advance other than what I've looked at is uh, I've watched Minnesota a couple times on TV. Last night they played my old assistant, Mark Montgomery, at Northern Illinois, and uh, I definitely think they're better, uh, a lot better. And uh, I have seen Northwestern once or twice, but I really didn't look to you mentioned it and what that's going to be like after Christmas. I'm, I'm just I'm trying to survive till Santa gets here, and then I'm going to figure out how to adapt um, after that. So, but you are right. I, I, I think Rutgers. I, I do think they're eight and one or nine and one or nine and two. Nine and one. I don't know who they've played to be honest with you, but nine and one's nine and one. I don't care who you play. So, um, every one of those teams is better. I just put it that way. There, and, and a couple of them are a lot better than last year. Tom, I know you just kind of alluded to it, but I remember last year when Denzel was out, that was one of your concerns when he comes back, that adjustment period with, with a guy like Miles who well, that's, know, everyone hasn't played much together. Is there anything you can do about that now? Or is well, it that's, kind of that's, the, that's why we're trying to do the educational part because there's a big difference in Miles coming back and Denzel coming back because Denzel was a four-year, you know, three-year starter and a four-year player. And... You know, Miles hasn't been the one Big Ten gym yet. So that part of it doesn't put it in the same at all. Uh, but I also think Miles is a competitor, uh, a pretty intelligent player, and uh, he's chomping at the bit right now. So uh, these things about, you know, do I know it's going to work? No, because I've never done it. You know, is it kind of ridiculous? Okay, I got him sitting up by me. So that uh, he uh, he hears what we're saying much more than his input. He hears, hey, this guy's not doing this well enough. This guy's not doing that well enough. This guy's doing a good job of this. So hopefully those things all rub off. Um, it's just you know, and my assistants came up with an idea on on the on the book. So he's sitting there writing things down. Uh, kind of crazy, but trying something to, to speed that process up. And uh, and then, you know, just about every year we've had a game after Christmas to reacclimate. And this year we start out with two Big Ten teams before the 30th or on the 30th. Uh, so it just, it just goes with what you were saying. You know, it's a year of, you know, a lot of different things have happened. Um, would I have wished it was some other year in that respect? Sure. But at the same time, it is what it is. And where I think I'm getting a little better is control what you can control. And I sure as hell can't control that. I know you've uh, 
we've talked about Van Dyke extensively, but I mean, his minutes keep going up out of necessity. Um, yeah, I was gonna say. And I mean, especially the challenge of playing at the five for a guy like that. I mean, how has he handled those? And and I guess, what, what does he give you in those minutes? And it seemed like a lot of energy and effort despite his size. Well, it's a lot easier him to adapt to the five than it was Carl Arns or Elvin Ellis to the four this week. But uh, he, uh, he's got a heart as big as a lion, you know. He's smart. Um, he's tough. Um, not overskilled, of course. And not oversized, of course. But um, kind of knows how to play uh, as far as positioning. Studies a lot of tape. Knows his opponent pretty well. Um, so he's given us everything I could ask. I mean, the thought of him playing 20 minutes or 18, 19 minutes, whatever he played, um, wasn't in the game plan when the season started. And uh, But that's kind of the way the year's been. So, uh, you know, he, he fills a role kind of like Kobe, although Kobe never played, I don't think, half that many minutes. But he fills a role, and he's going to be able to be better if we can keep Nick and Kenny in the games and everything because he can do things. On five-minute stretches and three-minute stretches, I think he can help us a lot. In 20-minute stretches, I think that's asking the world of him. More out of curiosity on this one. In, in Indiana, they've got the, the Crossroads Classic, which is – doing very well to kind of promote college basketball there, which Indiana doesn't need it. But um, And then in Illinois, um, Illinois and Northwestern are hosting like a doubleheader type deal where they're both playing non-league games. Um, would you have any interest in doing something like that in the state here? I don't have any interest in another road game, if that's what you mean. Um, I have absolutely no interest in that. Uh, you know, the difference is we're playing – you know, you can do those things when you're not playing – caliber teams that we're playing um, and we're involved with a couple things. The Tournament of Champions is a monster event that uh, and then we've been in quite a few of these others. So there's only so many events you can be in and I I, I think if I had to look back, I, again I'll reiterate this a hundred times, I'm not disappointed in who we played. But when you don't have control of some of those things, um, in a scheduling, whenever you do games like that, TV kind of takes control and the promoters take control of those things and they're out of your hands. Uh, that, that is very difficult. Um, there's, you got the AC challenge, you got some kind of Thanksgiving Day tournament that you're probably going to play in every year. You got the Tournament of Champions. All of a sudden, you got five, six games of the 11 or the 13 that are out of your control completely, I think. One of these years now we got the Gavit games coming in too. Um, you know, that could be six. We're getting having half the games we have no control of. And then um, just this amount of time on the road is probably the, the one factor that um, over the years, I won't say we laughed at, we questioned a few schools around the country that played a ton of home games. This would have been a year it would have really benefited us to play a ton of home games, not because of the chance to win as much as the chance to practice and not be fatigued by travel. And so uh, I don't know. You know, I, I, I'm pretty much game to anything. So if you got something worked out with a promoter, we can play the Spurs. I'd probably look at it. But if, if it was too far from home, if we can get that done in Hazlitt High School, you know, Catholic Central, I'd be jacked. But if it's uh, another road game, um, we definitely don't need the exposure. And I think we've put our best foot forward as well as any program in this nation with promoting college basketball and having events that I think benefit uh, college basketball. Tom, actually, segueing right off that, this is the second year that you, the women's team, and the hockey team are doing this triple header with Northeastern. I'm sure you're grateful it's in East Lansing this year. But having done it last year, just what do you think of this overall event and how great is it? Well, it, it's, it's, again, it's a, a phenomenal event. Um, 
it was fun going with our, you know, taking our guys to a hockey game and fun, you know, being on a plane with our women's team and our hockey team. And I mean, those things are, are good. You know, you don't get enough to spend enough time with the other sports and the other coaches. And, um, you know, it was really probably good. I don't know how many hockey players go to basketball games. There might even be less basketball players that go to hockey games. And I, I think that was a, a cool thing. You know, we played out there in a place where the Celtics played 100 years ago or whatever. Um, but it, it just adds on to the travel, you know, and it adds on to another road game. And, uh, and so that makes it difficult. You know, Mark is friends with the AD there, and it worked out to be a good a good idea and a kind of a neat little quirk like you're saying about the games maybe at the palace or somewhere else <clears throat> but at the same time um there'll be a little more attention to detail as you learn and go through things on when we play and where we play more than who we play so i'll play anybody um the any place, any time, um, there's got to be at least some adjustments to make it fair to our own players. And probably you guys. I'm sure some of travel is great. Some of your bosses probably don't think it's so good. And probably some of your wives don't think it's so good or girlfriends or whatever, whatever, whatever. Kyle Arns, what kind of uh, progress is he making? I know you guys have worked in the past with younger guys trying to learn how to play hard. Um, some areas maybe that's coming along, some areas still needs work. What are your thoughts about him? You know, with Kyle Arns, he's about as tough, farm kid, good kid, smart kid. Not playing as hard up until this past game. I thought he played harder. But, you know, it's hard to play hard when you're not sure what you're doing. You know, there's got to be a comfort level that you have um, if you're thinking instead of reacting when you move positions and you're kind of put in different spots. It's, it's difficult. I don't have a lot of patience for that until the game's over and the locker room's done and I go up my office and watch the film and I say, what do I expect? You know, what should I expect? That has been the most difficult thing for me that keeps me sleepless is not the games and not the travel and not all these things. It's what can I demand and what do I expect? And uh, I, 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 it's been a little more difficult. You know, I tried to stick with the, well, at our place we do this, this, and this. But it's, uh, it's been a little more difficult in the last couple of weeks especially. But the whole year has been more difficult than normal. And we're moving Kyle around. Um, he actually played, I think, five minutes of center this game. Does the world end? No. But is it, is it fair to put a guy in that position? Probably not, but uh, like I told him, he's in the same boat as I am. I, you know, I can't worry about things I can't control. He's got an opportunity to play. Um, he's got to make the best of it. I mean, I, I would be willing to bet in my career, 22 years, and if there's another 5, 10, 22 years left, uh, I don't think I'll ever be in this position again. Um, it's just strange how it happened. But... As I said, there is a silver lining in this. It's it's kind of made me look at things a little differently now and got to come up with new things, got to come up with better things. Every time you see that something doesn't work, um, you got to figure out why. You just don't get, it's not as smooth for me, it's not as smooth for them. So in some ways, we're all in the same boat. And uh, I think that brings camaraderie with your staff, your players, everybody. It's not the us against the world mentality, it's us against the world to survive, you know, and try to figure out that we're all grasping for some things. This is not the norm. It doesn't happen very often. And let's see if we can get through it. And we're making some progress. We really are. There's, you know, three 18-point leads in that game. And with a chance, you get to 20, and all of a sudden, it could end up 30. And there's just some mistakes we make or fatigue factors we make or not having the right lineups in there or not doing a good enough job coaching them, whatever it is. And we're just going to try to build on those and learn. But we did get 18-point leads against teams that, you know, we've played one or two teams that I think are, are uh, 
like a lot of teams around the country, you know, not not quite good enough, but we've played at least six that I know will be in the NCAA tournament, and another two or that I think are better than mid-quality teams. I mean, not high, but definitely uh, teams. If you look around the country right now, the number of teams uh, who beat Washington last night, Nevada uh, at Washington, somebody else got beat. Um, it was kind of funny because I was reading an article that Matt gave me on North Carolina. You know, they lost one guard, and uh, their team kind of crumbled. I mean, you know, they were down 15 to a an average Tennessee team, and I'm thinking one guy, and they got five other McDonald's guys, and it kind of brings perspective. It doesn't bring an excuse, and it doesn't give you a hall pass. It just perspective is what you need sometimes in, in these jobs. And I, I, you know, the cool part is even you guys, and this is, I don't know, insulting or complimentary, whichever way you want to take it, but I think you're trying to figure out, you know, what should I expect out of this team? How can I write something if I really don't know what I, what I am allowed to expect? I mean, we all got to be critical. You guys do, and I do. Just the way it is. But, but you got to be critically fair. And uh, I've had a couple times when I've struggled to be critically fair, because um, the bottom line for me is I got to win games. But I'm, I'm learning. I'm adjusting. Uh, it's kind of cool to learn something when you just got in the Hall of Fame, and I feel like I'm reinventing myself as a coach, and uh, that's okay. It's it's painful, but it's I think it's going to reap some benefits before I'm done. Anything else? He got it.